Hi, this is Bob with County Records Research, and good morning. It's about 11.45. Today is March 29th, 2017, Wednesday. This has been a fast year, hasn't it? Uh, we're already uh, close to getting into April, and uh, we've had a lot of people get great deals this year. We want to bring your, uh, your attention to the fact that we are seeing some very interesting trends in the marketplace today. We're seeing uh, more properties on their way to auction. We're seeing more dropped bids at the auction, more opportunities to buy those properties and get great deals. Uh, we are also seeing a new wave of foreclosures, properties that only have loans that are one or two years old are heading into the default process. So this tells us that we've got an opportunity that's headed in our direction and interest rates have only just started to climb. So we have the best of all worlds. We have an increase in the number of people that are uh, running into delinquency problems. We have an increase in the number of notes that are starting to uh, go into arrears and creating an opportunity for us to uh, buy them uh, from the lender or bid at the trustee sale. And we're also seeing that, um, that we have a very interesting transitional um, government now, which means that there are going to be changes, and those changes always tend to cause situations uh, that allow us to develop our portfolio. So keep an eye on the marketplace, keep an eye on what's going on, and bear in mind as situations come up that we haven't encountered in a number of years, that's going to translate into changes in how people manage their loans and how homeowners pay their loans. Uh, and this also applies to commercial notes. So what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of opportunity in the next year. The thing to remember is that you need a source of data so you know where those opportunities are coming from and you need a sounding board for of folks that are familiar with the processes of foreclosure and investing in these types of properties so that you can determine the difference between a good deal and a bad one and that's what you have with county records research and let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the website and see some of the uh, sources of information that you can use as a subscriber to the data. So first of all, I've activated the visual portion of our screen. So you can see that the main screen itself, we see our county records research logo here on the left. On the right hand side is our 800 number. And then just above that, we have our chat and live support button uh, to join us uh, for a chat. You'll notice that the green light's on and uh, it says online. So our chat operator is standing by uh, for your questions. And this is available from 9 to 6, Monday through Friday, so that we can give you immediate guidance and knock out a question in real time that is holding you back. Remember, the only thing that can stop us from succeeding is failure to pursue the opportunity. So don't fail to pursue that opportunity. Don't fail to ask questions and don't fail to take advantage of all of our resources. So now below the chat button and the 800 number are some header buttons, our home, about us, login. Uh, our free trial option. You'll notice we have this a few different spots on the home page because we want to encourage people to do the free trial. Now we also have a button for a free property search. That's a different thing. Our free property search will not give you complete information. It's intended simply so that if somebody wants to go in with no obligation whatsoever and test the waters, they can see what kind of numbers are there. But if you really want detailed profiles as if you subscribe to the data, then you want to select the five day free trial button or the free trial up on top. If you're not sure about our pricing, you can select the pricing option and see how we break out our pricing. But it's real simple with county records research. You either subscribe to one zone, two zones, or you subscribe to everything. Now, if you subscribe to one zone, that's 89 a month. Two zones is 154. Everything we carry is 195. Now, the important thing to remember about our service is every account's a team account. If you want to buddy up with folks in Nevada and Arizona and and Oregon, do so. Split the cost of the account between you and get a great deal because. The advantage with county records research is we're not just a data source. 
we're your mentors, we're your teacher, we're your guide, and we are a foreclosure processor, so we understand the ins and outs of working the data. So it's not just a website, it's not just a data source, it's an ongoing teaching program that is live and real people focusing on real questions to get you to the next level. Now, next to pricing is our foreclosure processing button, and this has a bunch of subcategories. Foreclosure processing has been a key part of our business for well over 20 years. Our focus as a company is to provide the best service at the best price. Now, with foreclosure processing, we can estimate the cost of processing a foreclosure on a loan. If you're a note purchaser or just investigating that process, we recommend that you look at the foreclosure closure processing section to learn more about the process of buying notes. Kurt has been very successful in buying thirds and seconds and firsts on properties and uh, as he's gotten more uh, involved in the process over the decades, he's progressed to, you know, today buying first on large uh, commercial apartment buildings. So what he's found over time is that the, the, uh, the bigger they are, the easier it is to buy the note. Uh, and he's substantially been able to increase his discount per deal by buying the notes at a significant discount in the larger um, dollar of figures because as you get into the larger numbers, the lenders are more inclined to want to discount that note if you're talking a big lender on a commercial property. Now, if you're talking smaller lenders, private lenders or seller carryback lenders on residential properties, then also you're going to find these parties are interested in selling their notes at a discount because oftentimes they just simply need to get cash in hand versus a promise that's not being kept. Now, if we scroll down the page, you'll see further information on our site. Now I've just scrolled down to where we've got some general information and then uh, another option to start that five-day free trial. Below that, these are a bunch of different um, buttons that we can select to get additional information. So you'll notice in the border here we've got investment clubs. Look here for investment clubs if you want to find different investment groups that you can socialize with and maybe find additional partners to share your account. Uh, our seminar highlight podcast is a series of audio recordings of presentations that have been done in the past where we took the highlights and put them into these audio recordings that you can play on an mp3 or 4 player or also that you can listen to in your car uh, and again it's audio so that you're not limited into uh, in, in the inability to be able to drive or uh, go jogging or take a walk while you're listening to some of the highlights of presentations. Now, Q&A with Kurt Demir is a series of video presentations where he's asked very specific questions that people have presented him with over the years. We kind of put together a target list of those questions and we recorded his answers in a little uh, series of small videos. So we re recommend that you check that out. Now, we also have a YouTube channel. So we want to point out that if you haven't investigated us through YouTube, do so because on our YouTube channel, you can get a lot of healthy information. You can get copies of seminars like this one. Uh, you can get copies of other events that Kurt has done. And uh, we also provide a Friday presentation. This is our Wednesday, by the way. Every Wednesday, we focus on an overview of the site and showing you the features and benefits of having the subscription. Uh, that helps you with your property research techniques and some basic steps on how to make the website perform functions for you with our automated opportunities. Now, uh, on Friday, we get in and we do some direct research and we analyze properties. So Friday is a lot more freewheeling um, and we're focused on finding the deal. Today, uh, we're more focused on just making sure you know where things are. So this is kind of giving you a roadmap of how to use the site. So now below the border here, uh, here's that foreclosure processing section. Again, we put it there a second time because we want to encourage people who aren't familiar uh, to familiarize themselves with the process of foreclosure. So that's all the same headers for forms glossary terms, and contact us if you want to contact us and ask questions on how to buy property or how to uh, process a foreclosure, the timeline, all that kind of stuff. Now, to the left of that 
is our training and support section. Foreclosure 101 is like going to school on how foreclosures work. Now if I click on that, this opens that, uh, that article called Foreclosures 101. If I scroll down, this takes me through and walks me through the process of the foreclosure and different ways to, uh, to acquire properties through the foreclosure process. So this is my Foreclosure 101 overview article. If you haven't read it, we recommend that you do. Okay. Below that is industry terms and definitions. This is a glossary. This is like a little dictionary of different terms that we use when we're talking about foreclosure properties. So it's also helpful in terms of just, again, getting your, getting your definitions straight. Because sometimes we conflate things, sometimes we tie uh, things to together that we shouldn't tie together. Uh, and, and I, for one, am a dot connector. I like to connect the dots. But you don't always connect them correctly if you don't know all your terms and definitions. So this is a good spot to just kind of make sure you know what you're, you're, you're dealing with and, uh, and to help you ask, answer some of your questions you might have if you're researching and looking at things in the evening or on the weekend when we're not here for you to hit the chat button or give us a call or send us an email. Now remember you can always send us an email in the evening or the weekend and we will respond to it when we're back in the office. So never hesitate to send us a uh, a message that way. Now below that is our free resources and links page. Now this is a series of different websites out there that we put uh, links on this page. It doesn't necessarily mean that there are companies. They're not ours. They're actually other companies. There are law firms here. There are insurance agents. There are real estate clubs. There's even a, uh, a website for a, a group called Flipper Connection. And this is like a club, but they're online. So it's a venue that people can go to to try and find uh, other investors, contractors, money guys. So we do recommend, you know, look at what you got here and see if you want to search uh, any of these links further. Foreclosureforum.com is a website for a good friend of ours, Ward Hannigan, down in San Diego County, who's been teaching people how to buy properties for uh, easily as long as Kurt has. So if you haven't had a chance to meet Ward, he is an, uh, an excellent uh, source of wonderful information, and Foreclosure Forum is a great source for articles. He's also a very good teacher if you're not sure how you want to hold title on properties and you want to have a good investment structure. Um, he's a very good teacher for that, so we do recommend don't uh, don't hesitate to use our sources here on the free resources page um, to find out more information um, and to, to make sure that you have access to all the resources that can help you make a smart help make you a smart investor. Okay, now below that is our video training. And this is one of Kurt's uh, events that he did in the past. Uh, you can see it's a little dated because we're actually using a whiteboard. Uh, but he's been teaching people for many years. So if you haven't watched this one, we definitely recommend you do. Now below that is how to use this website. This is a series of screen captures. As a matter of fact, the majority of this is going to be very similar to what you're going to see right now. Okay, so these are screen captures of how to use the website, just basic structure so that you know how to use the site and get the most out of it. Okay. Now, to the left of the training and support, we have a series of, of uh, click on uh, buttons to go to other things. We have an affiliate program. If you're not familiar with it, uh, County Records Research has had an affiliate program for some years, and this is how we partner with entrepreneurs and real estate clubs and give you a chance to refer business in our direction and get rewarded through the process of residual payments of a percentage of what people will pay us. So if you haven't taken advantage of that, we recommend you consider it. Um, our affiliate program has been in place for, for uh, again, for years to help people that are uh, forming clubs or entrepreneurial businesses and they simply want to partner with County Records Research and, uh, and, and uh, help each other in both directions. Now below that is our trustee sale bidding service login button. This is to get uh, set up on a bidding service account. Now, this is where I would log in if I already have an account. And if I scroll down, we talk about some aspects of the service. And uh, you'll, if you hit the click here option, then you can set up your 
trustee sale bidding service account. Now, our bidding service account is free. It is a companion account to our primary account, and it's designed to allow you to select the bid now option on any property profile and to have our bidder work the auction for you. Okay, so that's to set up your bidding account or your affiliate account, those two. Now, if I want to select a property search option or check out a series of forms that we've put together, I do need to log into my main account to do that. Okay, so these two are proprietary buttons that I have to be logged into my main account, and I haven't done that yet, so we're not going to click on those. Now, frequently asked questions is similar to our glossary or dictionary section. These are frequently asked questions where we've typed in a written answer to each question. So again, 24-7, uh, you know, weekends, evenings, you have access to answers to a lot of your questions if we're not available to answer them one-on-one. -on -one. But we do encourage you during the week, Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, if you can get an answer one-on-one -on -one and get to the next level to, to where you're ready to go make offers or bid at the auction, we want to encourage you to, uh, to strike while the iron's hot and, and really take advantage of the resource that you have at County Records Research. Anybody can sell you a list we're the ones that can teach you how to buy a property. Now, below that is our testimonials, and that's some people that have had some good deals on the site, so they'd like to tell you about that. Uh, if I click on that, um, I'll have a few different links. Okay, it's working a little slow there. There we go. All right, so uh, these are some, uh, Bruce Norris is a, a, a very well-known um, actually kind of a celebrity in the foreclosure and lending space. So he's recommending us, and as are several others. Now, mind you, we have a lot more satisfied customers than we have testimonials because not everybody in the foreclosure space likes to share how they got the great deal. A lot of them like to keep that close to the vest, as would you. If you found out something that you thought was a, a method that not everybody knows, then obviously you're not going to spread it around. Um, like icing on top of a cake. Now, below our testimonials, we have three different uh, buttons to sign up for notifications. Trusty sale field trips is uh, how I can sign up to uh, get notified about upcoming um, field trip uh, opportunities uh, where Kurt's going to be doing live training at the auction location. So I would type in my information, my email address, and which auction I'm intending to uh, attend, and then type in my code and hit submit, and then I can sign up to receive that. Similarly, we have a foreclosure basics tutorial, which gives us uh, listings of upcoming sales as well as recent sales successes. And we have just a general email notification if you want to get notified about different types of properties that are popping up in the system. Again, like our free search, this gives you some general information, not a lot of specific details based on specific property types. So if you're a person that wants to know what the numbers are like before you jump in and set up an account, this is an opportunity to ask us to send you a generalized email um, to give you some information. It's not going to give you complete addresses and it's not going to give you all the loan information as you would get as a subscriber. It's simply something to put your toe in the water and see if it's time to jump back in. Okay, so I'm going to hit my back arrow and I'm right back at my home page. Now, to the left of this section, we have our, our About Us, Privacy Poly. This is, this is like your, your column for your basic website stuff, terms of use, uh, contact us. Now, we do have the Register Now option. This is if you want to set up an account and just jump right in without using the free trial option. Uh, you can hit Register Now and select your zones. We also have a blog here, and I encourage you, I'm not going to show you the blog at this moment, but I encourage you to click on the blog and get in there and look at some recent articles. It's definitely going to enlighten you. And, and our, our blog literally goes back a good six years. So we encourage you to go in there and look at some very interesting situations, great deals people have gotten. And you'll notice as you look at the blog, great deals happen every month. They're not once in a blue moon. They're, they're literally every week, every month, uh, sometimes daily, depending upon how many properties are in the, in the chain of, of events that are foreclosures. Now, above that, we have terms of use. Again, look at that at your leisure. But I want to show you our calendar of upcoming events. 
If you're somebody that's just joining us uh, and hasn't used the website before, maybe you're actually watching this presentation on our YouTube channel, that's fine. Uh, we want to make sure that you know as a subscriber to the data, you're welcome to come to our calendar of upcoming events and seminars uh, and see what's coming. Now, even if you're not a subscriber yet, you can just click on this button and see what we've got planned in terms of live events. Now, there are three different categories under our calendar of events page. The first is our field trip events. Now, these are live trainings. We call them field trips because they're daytime, you know, kind of like when we were all in school and learning about how things worked in the world. And this is where Kurt Demir goes to one of the local event locations uh, where auctions are held. Monday through Friday. Now, in this case, we, we've got a couple of unique opportunities for you. First of all, Kurt's going to be down in San Diego County at the El Cajon auction location. Now, we choose the primary auction location whenever we set up a field trip because we want as many potential sales to take place in front of you as part of your educational process when you attend a field trip event. So this trusty sale field trip is going to be at El Cajon on Main Street and this is again the primary location for San Diego County. Notice the scheduled time is 10 o'clock in the morning. That's because we understand that most of the sales for that day are set for 10.30. You're going to find that we usually will set the beginning time of our field trip event about a half hour before the sales are set to commence and that way you have time to get settled get parked. If you're running five or ten minutes late, you're not going to miss an opportunity to observe some sales go down. Okay, so that's why we set that for 10 o'clock. He'll probably be there till about noontime, uh, and that's an opportunity again to meet Kurt, the founder of the company, who's bought many, many properties using every method that we teach, and ask uh, some very direct questions and get some very direct answers. You're going to find he's very matter of fact. He's to the point, and his answers are not going to duck your question. They're going to answer it and get you to the next point to where you can use the data and go out there and get some deals like he has. Now below that, we have our upcoming uh, Las Vegas presentation, which is very special. Uh, we do these events about once a year with a company called Paper Source that coaches people on how to buy notes on properties. This is also one of the methods that we teach and therefore the relationship formed because we're both of the same mind. We know that if you can buy the note on a property, which is the loan itself, at a discount, then you put yourself in a position to either collect the in, uh, incoming payments on that loan uh, and, uh, and use that as a long-term investment strategy or that you can use this as a strategy to acquire properties or take them to auction through foreclosure and simply get a lump sum payment at the auction. It's a great way to use your monies to invest in a creative way versus putting your monies in kind of a static investment uh, and hoping for the best. Now, um, the events dates are going to be here on the left-hand side. So San Diego, El Cajon, he'll be there on April 7th. And uh, April 7th, that is a Friday. Now, on April 27th, which is a Thursday, that's when he's going to be in the Las Vegas location. Now, this place on 4th Street in Las Vegas, Kurt has scheduled the event for 9.30, and that's because the auctions start at 10 o'clock. Again, we schedule the start time about a half hour before the, the auctions will begin, so you have time to get parked, get settled, and be ready to learn and see some auctions take place right in front of you. More information is here below. Don't hesitate to call or click on our chat button if you want to learn more because we're here to help. Now below that is our weekly go to meeting demonstration information. So this is where we're at right now. We're at our weekly go to meeting for Wednesday, March 29th, and we began at 1145 and we're going to 1245. And the link here is where some people that are joining us live as we're speaking found us. We also send emails to new subscribers each week. So that's another way that you might have linked up to us. Now, if you found us on YouTube, it's also helpful to know that we have a launch link to YouTube's channel for County Records Research where it says click here to view previous demonstrations and I just clicked on that and this is our YouTube channel and it immediately starts launching a presentation. Now once I'm into the YouTube channel if I want to see the other 
um, presentations that we have, I just click on county records research and it takes me to the main channel and then I can pick and choose anything I want to see. So that's always nice. Okay, now I'm going to close that out. I'm right back at my uh, calendar of events page. So now, notice we have a Wednesday presentation, which is best, best practices for using the website. So the focus of today's presentation, again, is an overview of the site, giving you some of the features and benefits, and then we're going to go in and we're going to do some light research, save some properties, and save a few searches and show you how that's all done. Now, as I scroll further down, Again, we have our Friday presentation. This one, when I get this one going in two days, this is going to be based on grabbing a group of properties that are set to go to auction in the near future. And it's always different because it's always different properties every week. But more importantly, we kind of bounce from one different search uh, focus to another to look at other properties. For instance, this Friday, I very likely will do a search of what's going to go to sale coming up in San Diego County because we have that upcoming presentation. Now, notice that below our go to meeting information, we have another speaking engagement section, and, and this is where Kurt's going to do those live events that are not necessarily daytime events. Those are our field trips. Now, what we have here, we have two different engagements. We have the San Diego meeting, and, and notice the, the connection here. When we have an evening event, because we've been invited to speak for someone, then we, con then we also conduct a field trip event as a daytime presentation. Now, the field trip is, again, linked directly to the auctions. Therefore, the field trip is going to happen usually during the morning or afternoon, depending upon when the auctions are held at that specific auction location. Now, the evening hours and location are set by the, the party that has invited Kurt to present. So in this case, we have the San Diego Investment Club, which has set their meeting up to be um, at a location on Jimmy Durante Boulevard in Del Mar, California. And uh, it's the San Diego Investment Club. Now, they use Meetup to coordinate their meeting events. So if you go to meetup.com, you can look them up and find out more for the, of the information and, um, and see if you can pre-order your, your, your ticket to attend the presentation. I am getting some background static there. So I am gonna. I, I did have to go ahead and hit mute because I started getting some background static there. So do feel free to go ahead and use the uh, the chat window if you need to ask me any questions as I go through things because I am going to try and move through this because we've got about uh, a half an hour to go and we're going to get right into using the website as soon as we're finished uh, with this discussion of the events page. Now, so this is the San Diego event and that's going to be on uh, April 6th. Now, notice that's going to be on the Wednesday uh, prior, I'm, I'm sorry, that's the Thursday prior to the Friday field trip event. So notice how I fixed that, I corrected myself. So this is a Thursday night event, and then the very next day, Kurt's going to do the field trip event at the El Cajon auction. So notice, two different addresses, because the auction is defined by where the lenders are holding their sale, and the evening event is defined by where the San Diego Investment Club holds their evening meeting. So those are two separate locations, so keep that in mind. All right, now down below that, we're pointing out that we've got the Paper Source Note Symposium. Now, notice how this is a blue link, so you can click on that to find out more about their, their symposium. Um, the uh, hotel rooms are selling out for this event, so we do recommend if you are interested. Uh, it's going to be April 27th through the 29th. Now, Kurt is going to be the keynote speaker on the 27th. Um, and that is, again, Thursday. He's also going to be doing that field trip in the morning as we've uh, showed up on top. If you want to learn more about this, uh, please click on the Paper Source Note uh, Symposium link, or you can click on the link here for the Tuscany Suites and Casino. And again, uh, I understand the suites are selling out because there are other events. Of course, it's Las Vegas. They always have other events. So if you're going to attend, make sure that you make your plans accordingly. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call us or use our chat. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and hit the back arrow again. I'll be back at my main page. Now we're going to go back up to the top. 
and I'm going to log in into my account. Now we're going to look at how you use the website and how we set up searches and save properties. So I'm going to select the login option and it's going to ask me for my username and my password. So I'm going to type in Baker and I'm going to go ahead and type in my password for today. Let's see if I got it right. I don't always remember my password so well. You know, I'm not a spring chicken anymore, but uh, let's see if I got it right. Now also notice underneath the username and password we have a CAPTCHA image that's usually numbers or letters. In this case it's all letters and you have a few lines to break it up a little bit so that we have a challenge. Now also notice that I did not capitalize any of my letters in this box. You don't have to capitalize at all so don't worry about that. Just worry about getting the numbers and or letters in the same order and then hit submit and let's see if I got it right. Okay. There I'm in. So now I've just logged into my account and that this is my welcome page. Now once I've logged in, take note of a few things. Once I've logged into my account, the login option is no longer there. It now has the option of property search. Now to the right of property search is my account. Notice underneath my account I have a bunch of subheadings on how I manage my account. So before we get into a property search, we're going to look at my account and then we're going to move into the search process. So first of all, I'm going to select my account and that opens up my account page that gives me my basic information on the account that I set up with County Records Research. Now notice if I scroll towards the bottom of this section, there's my renewal date. So if you're ever unsure of when you're going to get charged on your account, if you have a, a monthly subscription with us, you can always go to your My Account page and see when the renewal is going to take place. So there's no surprise here. Okay. If you need to change your account prior to a renewal, you can send us an email and let us know. Say, hey Bob, I'd like to reduce my zones. Uh, if I have all, all the zones at 195 and I want to drop it to 2 or 1, then I can just simply uh, go ahead and, uh, and make that change. Also, notice underneath this, I can also add zones. Um, and I can add those at a prorated level if I want to simply add zones to my account. Okay, so this is my My Account. Now, notice above this basic information are some more um, tabs where I can change my account information. Okay, first of all, I have my properties, then my searches, and then the manage folders option. Now, my properties and manage folders are two that are connected. If I click the manage folders tab, these are the folders wherein I save properties. So if I pick manage folders, then this opens up a list of folders that I've created over time. These are like sections in a three ring binder or, or, or files in a file cabinet. These are where I drop my property information from the site so I can retrieve it at a later date. So now what we're looking at right now is we're looking at like a table of contents for that for that notebook or that filing cabinet and if I need to add an additional um, uh, uh, category I can. So notice I have first lender buyouts, second lender buyouts and then I have files that have specific cities. Artesia, Bellflower, Fountain Valley. I have one for hotels for clients that are interested simply in hotels. Okay, Huntington Beach, La Habra. I have all these different cities. Now let's say that I have a city that I that I um, am interested in but I don't have a folder for that city. Let's say for instance I've got a client that's contacted me and said hey Bob I want to find properties in the city of Downey. Can you start looking at foreclosures for me? Let's, so let's say that I've got a friend or a client who wants to buy Downey properties. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to, now if you're brand new with us and you haven't set up a bunch of folders, this section will be all the way up on top. And this is real simple. Watch what I do. I'm going to type in Downey, okay, just the city name, and then I'm going to hit Add Folder. Now what the system just did is it just added the folder alphabetically in between Chino and Fountain Valley. There's Downey now. Okay, so I've just created a folder. Now let's say that I've got the, the Downey folder, which is great, but I've got another folder I, not, I need to get rid of. Uh, and let's say I want to get rid of the, pro, the folder that says Bellflower. 
Well, notice the little check box next to Bellflower, and then I can scroll down. I've just checked the box, and I'm going to scroll down, and I've got a button for delete records. Now, notice what just happened. Anytime you go to delete anything from the site, we have a fail-safe built into the site. This is to prevent Bob from doing something stupid, like eliminating his Bellflower folder without having opened it up to make sure he doesn't have any properties in there he doesn't want to lose. So Bob says, aha, I shouldn't get rid of Bellflower because I haven't checked it to make sure that I don't have any properties in there that I don't want to lose. So I'm going to hit cancel. Okay, if I had hit OK, my Bellflower file would be gone along with any properties in it. Okay, so that's why we have a fail save, so I don't delete something and go, oops. Now, I could still go, oops, because Bob could have hit OK, but at least I know that there's that fail safe in there prevent me from making an immediate mistake. Now, that being said, I'm going to check the My Properties tab, and this opens up the actual My Properties folder. Now, notice this is a general folder that includes all the properties I've saved, and that includes ba uh, um, Bellflower, that includes uh, Bakersfield, any of these records that I've saved in the system in any of the folders. Notice that right under my properties it says all folders and that box is checked. Next to that option is a drop down menu, and I can select Bellflower, and I had nothing in the Bellflower folder, so I could have got rid of that, that Bellflower folder and I would have still been okay. Now if I check all folders again, notice how it repopulated the whole report with all the saved properties. Let me also point out something. Look at this folder and notice that there are two different types of property profiles in the system. This is categorically the difference between notices of default and notices of sale in the county records research system. Notice that whenever I have a group of both, that the ones on top have more information, the ones on the bottom have empty spaces. Okay, so notice the empty spaces in these records down below, whereas the ones on top have a lot more information. That's because a notice of default, as these ones are down below, is an incomplete record. A notice of default is the very start of foreclosure. And at that point, the lender hasn't put all the information out for everybody to see. I know that I'm in default, but I don't know exactly what it would take to pay off the loan. That's because at the notice of default stage, the lender is issuing a warning. A notice of default is the first shoe to drop. It's, it's, it's that shot over the bow where the lender says, hey, Bob, you're behind on your payments. Okay? But it doesn't say this is how much it would take to pay off Bob's house. Okay. Now, once a notice of default is issued by law, the lender has to wait three months or about 90 days before they can issue the second document, which is called a notice of trustee's sale. Now, when we pull in a notice of trustee's sale, there's going to be more information. Notice that we have an estimated minimum bid. Now, that estimated minimum bid is provided by a lender because what the lender is saying is Bob's behind on his house payment and I've added all the figures together and I'm going to hold an auction. Now, at the auction, the lender can ask for that estimated minimum bid because that's what he's owed or he can ask for less. Okay, so this is important. The lender can ask for at the auction what they're owed or less. They can't make up a number. Okay, if the, if the lender says I owe him uh, um, 1,233 k then at the auction, depending upon the actual value of the house, he might go down in price. Now, this property in Redondo Beach, I think that's what's going to happen here because the bank is owed 1.2 and the property is worth 1.1. So if the lender goes at 1.2 at the auction, then it's very likely that it's going to be going, going, gone back to the lender if they ask for too much money. Now, if I'm going to be bidding at the auction, then I'm aware the lender could drop this down to under a million bucks, and that might be my opportunity, especially if I'm using the bidding service, to simply place a maximum bid amount for the auction before it ever happens. Now, notice this. Whenever we have a notice of sale, we have that estimated bid, but we also have an opening bid if it's been made known, 
okay? Not always. Most of the time it's not made known until the auction actually happens, okay? So notice how most of these are blank or zeros, okay? Now, as you move further, you see that we have a senior, junior loan column. Now, these are true of any record in our system. We're going to show you the loan position that's foreclosing, and we're also going to show you senior and junior loans. The reason we do this is so that I know from just glancing at this record, this is a foreclosing first loan. I compare the value with the, mar with the estimated bid, and I know what's owed on that first loan. I also know, according to my senior junior loan column, that there are other loans involved. Now notice, our senior junior loan column was set up as an indicator of relativity of loans of one to another. With a foreclosing first, with a one in the loan position column, I'm always going to see zeros in front. The reason being is the loan that's foreclosing is not represented by a figure in this box, it's represented by the slash itself. So the slash is a placeholder for that foreclosing loan. So anything ahead of a first would be zero because the first is the first, okay? There's nothing ahead of your first loan. Now, if there's a second, in this case there is, then the system is indicating that second is $103,950 in to the right of the slash. So if it's to the right of the slash, it's, it's a second or a third, okay? If it's a foreclosing first. Now notice the third property down on the report. This is a, a condo in Reseda. This is a foreclosing second. And in this position, there could be something ahead of the slash, and there is. There's a $250,000 first. So I can eyeball a record in our system, see which loan is foreclosing, see if there are any senior loans to it or any junior loans after it, and start making my decisions before I ever open the profile. Now, since these profiles were saved into my My Properties folder, each one was saved into one of my subfolders or the general folder, okay, and then they're updated for me consistently based on the fact that I've saved them to my My Properties folder, and then they get updated. So this property on Satakoy and Reseda was postponed to April 13th. This might have been saved in my system two months ago. Okay, the one in Redondo Beach on top, this has been postponed all the way into June. Now, this property might have been set to go to auction in January, but as long as it's still saved in my system, the system will automatically pick up the, the changes in the dates and uh, keep it up to date in my, my properties folder. Now, Above the My Properties folder are more buttons, so let's look at these. There's email notifications and text notifications. Now, important point, these are only valid for sale notice records because these are based on changes in status. Notice what I said earlier. Notice as a default, they have blank spaces, whereas notices of sale have a status. So whenever the status changes, whether it's canceled, sold, postponed, then an email notification option, and I'll just check that box. Notice these are all properties where I've set up to receive an email notification of that change in status. Now that only again applies on notice of sale records, and the only way I can set that up is once I'm inside a profile, and we're going to see that in just a few minutes. Now text notifications, if I want that same function, to my phone as opposed to my email personally, I prefer email because I like to keep all my emails together in a set of folders so I can always go back and check my archive and research and I don't want to have my information in two places. You might be a person that handles everything through your smartphone. Use the smartphone functions then. Use the text notifications or if you have your email sent to your smartphone, use that. Just remember, the key is to coordinate your activity, have structure to your plan, follow your properties through, use the features of the site so that you can plan your work and work your plan. Now, to the uh, left of those and the manage folders, I have a My Searches tab. This is one of my favorite parts of the site is My Searches. Now, what I've done here is I've saved searches on the site, 
and then I've activated them to create an automated notification function. So notice every one of these is a safe search that has a specific name I've given it. I'm going to show you a new one in just a moment. So this is my Irvine NOD poly. So that's an Irvine notice of default polygon that I set up all the way back in April of 2015. Now, it's highlighted in blue, and under the email notification option, it gives me the option to deactivate. That means that it's activated. Okay. Notice the one in Fountain Valley that's just above. That gives me the option to activate. That means it's deactivated. It's, 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 it's dormant right now. So if it's highlighted in blue, it's active. If it's not highlighted in blue, it's dormant and not functioning. Now, I can hit the delete option if I want to get rid of it or I can just simply leave it dormant until I need it. So like this Fountain Valley Notice of Trustee Sale Polygon that I set up all the way back in 2012, gosh, I'm getting old, okay? If I just simply want to look at this setup, I just click on Fountain Valley NTS Poly, and I get launched to my property search screen. Now, notice what happens when I get to my property search screen. My county's already been selected. If I scroll further down, upcoming trustee sales has already been selected for me, and an auction date range has already been pre-selected for me. And if I scroll further down, here's the polygon that I set up five years ago, okay? And it's there for whenever I want to use it, okay? Now, let's say that I wanted to launch over to Fountain Valley and look at that target area, but I wanted to change my polygon. Then I could hit clear map, and I could create a brand new polygon. Watch how I do it. Left click, left click, left click, left click. Now, whenever you create a box, you always want to finish it off, right? With Because this is three sides of a, of a, okay, terrible square, but three sides of a square. Okay, it's not quite right. So, but I can go ahead and I can hit the last button, which is close poly shape here on the right hand side. The reason we have that button is it's very difficult for you or I to eyeball exactly where these lines match up, but the system can do it for us. So the closed poly shape works for that. Now, if I don't like the way that came out, I could hit delete last point, delete last point, delete last point. Look at how I just got rid of that. Now, if I didn't like the way that was set up at all, then I can go ahead and just select property search and start from scratch, and that's what we're going to do now. Because remember what I just set up a few minutes ago is I set up a, uh, a folder for Downey properties, right? So let's say I've got a client that wants me to search properties in Downey. So we're going to learn how to save a, a search for Downey, and we're going to learn how to um, save properties. So first of all, where the heck is Downey? Los Angeles County South is the South Bay. Los Angeles County is the only county we split into sections, but every county zone has an option to put your cursor over the zone and get a short list of cities in that zone. So LA County East, I don't see Downey. LA County North, don't see Downey. LA County South, whoops, there it is. So now I'm going to select Downey by picking LA County South, and then I'm going to scroll further. Now notice I click the box to the right of LA County South. Now, as I scroll further down, there's a section called Single Property Search. This is my absolute favorite part of the site, but I have to tell you, we go more into detail on this one on Friday because on Wednesdays I run out of time because we've given that whole overview to start things off. So learn more about this by watching my Friday webinars on the YouTube channel or joining me this Friday at 11.45 Pacific time. So now if I can get to it, I'll show you more, but I am running out of time, so I've got to start moving ahead. So now I've picked Los Angeles County South. If I scroll further down, this is my property search page. Now I've got a few options here. If I know the zip code for Downey, notice that we have on the right hand side a, a row of boxes. So if I know the zip code for Downey, here's the words zip code. And in this box or this box or this box, I could put in a zip code for Downey, okay, if I can remember it offhand. Now if I just want to type in the city, I could type in Downey. Notice I don't have to capitalize, the system doesn't care. 
Now, I just typed in Downey. Now, notice I didn't use the first or second window. I used this third one down that's in directly in line with the word city. Okay, now Downey, I could also type in Bellflower, I could type in Lakewood. I've got three boxes for three cities, I've got three boxes for zip codes. There's only three, but don't worry about that because you can set up as many safe searches as you want. And you want to have defined searches, so when you activate the save search function and you get emails, you want to know what's in them. You don't want to get a, just a huge grab bag of all of LA County because how is that going to help you save time? Again, the, the key to our saved function notification search functions and notifications is to save time to bring you the lead that you need right now. So now, with notice a default as my default search, this is important. Notice a default, remember I said those are the ones with less information, but they're the start of every foreclosure. Whenever we come to this section, the system will always choose notice a default for me because if I want to hit search and get a result, I'm going to get one. So notice what I just did is I only typed in Downey as the city and I just did a quick notice of default search. Now for the purposes of the demonstration I'm using Google Chrome. You'll notice the telltale tabs up on top for my open windows and I got four records. Notice the map. There's one, two, three, four orange icons and we use little orange icons for the notice as a default. Okay, and above the map it says map reflects 0 to 20 of 4. So I've got four properties. Now down below is my list. So map on top, list below, here are my addresses. Auto Street, Casanas, Laurelwood, and Shady Oaks. So these are my three properties. Notice how these are identical to the notice of default records that were on my saved properties folder list. Okay, and these are all going to show the value of the property. They're going to show you which loans foreclosing, loan position, and they're going to show you those senior, junior loans. It's also going to have an auction equity figure, which is simply a comparative number to tell you whether or not if this went to auction on the loan foreclosing, there is any equity. Okay, so just to keep in mind, that's a, that's a, a figurative number doesn't always bear true if it goes to sale because there could be other factors involved such as a rearage on the senior debt that's greater than what's indicated like this one on Shady Oak has a foreclosing second and it shows a $234,000 first. Well, how do we know that two thirty four dollars is still two thirty four? dollars It could be one fifty, dollars it could be $300,000, okay? And any change in that figure is not going to be reflected in this auction equity because we're going based on how much was borrowed, not how much they owe today. So part of what we teach you in our research techniques is how to extrapolate, how to actually look at what they owe on the loan that's foreclosing, and you can make a very accurate estimated guess as to what they owe on the senior debt. If you don't know what they owe the senior debt, you don't want to bid on a second at auction. That's for sure and for certain. However, it's safe to bid on any or to make an offer on any of these properties. If you're making offers or seeking listings, then don't over-research your properties. You don't have to. Use this as a resource and get out there and get your deals. If you're going to be bidding at auction, that's where we teach you how to be careful and make sure you're getting a good deal before you ever step foot at the auction. That's why we conduct our field trips and that's why we do our evening events as well because the more you know about the process of researching, the more you know about your properties. Now, if this was a larger list, I could sort by city by zip code by clicking on any of these headers, like with an Excel spreadsheet, I can sort by these headers, okay? With notice as a default, if I open, let's open Shady Oak and take a look. With a notice of default record, I have a full profile. Now, it gives me a map on the right, loans on the left. Map on the right, loans on the left. This is a notice of default record for this property on uh, Shady Oak in Downey. Now, this is a map that I can put my cursor in and then use the wheel on my mouse. I'm using a desktop. Notice also if I have a tablet or a smartphone, I can use these little magnifying glass goodies here on the left, but that they zoom very sharply. I don't have as much control. If I use the wheel on my, my mouse, I have a lot more defining control over my, inf over, over my uh, changes. Notice also I can scroll down and underneath the map, I can look for other records in the same neighborhood if I'm going to do a block 
uh, walk and go make offers on properties. I can pick other notices of default. Look at all those. I can pick other notices of trustee sale. Look at all the different colors. And then I can pick REOs. Now, if I scroll out a little bit, look at the activity that we have around here. So if I wanted to put together a target list and, and map out a, a walking route where I was going to start at one end and work my way, then I could do that. The only thing I would have to be sure of, of course, since you've got this channel here, is that I know where I'm going and that I'm not going to wind up, um, uh, you know, not being able to cross that channel, or if I know where that cross is, looks like it's this street right here, then I would know to plan my route accordingly. Now, if I want to uncheck those, I can just get rid of them. Now, all of those, all of those are accessible by putting your mouse over the uh, button and then going into the window and clicking on the address. So just remember, this is a great resource so that you can go in and intuitively look at all the properties in a neighborhood. Now, let's say I'm very interested in this property on Shady Oak, and I want to learn more about it. Now, if I scroll down, I've got all my property details. I've got a link to Zillow to see if it's listed with an agent, and it's not, that's fine. Uh, if I scroll further down on Zillow, I can see if it's had a listing lately, and it has not. Last time it sold was in 97, now I know. If I close that out, I'm right back at my profile. Now notice down below, I can put in notes, and I can upload photos. Now this is just for me. Also up on top, notice that I have a save button right above the map. I also can click on bird's eye and see the property. Okay. Now, if I go back to road, that's my map. Now, watch what I can do. I've got a save button to the general folder, but remember I created that downy folder, so I'm going to select downy, okay? And I'm going to hit save. Now, I've just saved this property to that My Properties folder system, but it's specifically in downy. Now, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and see where I'm at. I'm in between the 5 and the 710 and Lakewood and Firestone, so I know where I'm at. Now, using my, uh, my button up on top, my tab for the main page, I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to find Downey, and there's Downey. And remember where we were on that map. Okay, so let's see, we've got the 5 and the 710, and where are we on this map? Let's see. So we've got that canal, 710 and the 5, and this is Firestone and Lakewood. Okay. There's Firestone and Lakewood. Okay, and there's our canal, right? There we go. Okay, so notice what I just did. I just matched up this image to this image, and um, and there's this is our area where the property is, right? So now I'm going to use that um, that function with the uh, with the polygon, and I'm going to just follow this this av this boulevard right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start my polygon with a left click. Get out of there. Okay. So I'm, uh, let's uh, clear the map. So I'm going to start it with a, a left click and follow the street. Okay. Very badly. I never said I was perfect. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to follow this Suva Street because I know the property I want is right in this little neck of the woods, right? So I'm going to follow Suva Street. And I did see quite a few records along Guatemala, so I'm going to keep that as part of my my resource, and then I'm going to go down to this uh, Hurley Avenue, and I'm going to follow that all the way there, and now notice I've almost finished my polygon, but I've got this section here from this point to this point. Now again, that's really hard for me to make those two points connect, so I'm going to hit the close poly shape button, and then I'm going to log, then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now, why did I do it just this way? I'll show you. People ask me, hey, Bob, this is a notice of default record. How do I know when a notice of sale comes out? Okay, well, I just created a polygon that wraps around that target area. Now, the notice of sale 
is going to follow the notice of default by about three months or 90 days. So we're looking at approximately June 20th for that notice of sale to come out. What if I want to get an email from County Records Research telling me that notice of sale has just come out? Well, I now have a polygon that I can set up, and um, this is my Shady Oak. This is going to be my Shady Oak Downy Polygon. So now I'm going to scroll up a little bit, and I need to change something. First of all, I don't need to say Downy because I've got the polygon, so I'm going to undo Downy. Now, I don't want notices of default, I want upcoming sales, so I'm going to select upcoming sales instead. Don't worry about the dates, that's not important, okay? We're focusing on our geographic target and upcoming trustee sales. Everything else will figure itself out. So I'm going to hit save this search. Very important that I have LA County South selected only. I don't have multiple zones. I only want to have one zone selected if I'm using this feature. Okay, so as I'm using this feature, um, the system is going to memorize my search. Now it's in the process of memorizing, it's just acting a little, a little slow today. So um, I'm just waiting for it to finish memorizing my search. It's really uh, having to labor today, so I guess... Uh, Okay, usually this does this right away. It's just not working as quickly as it normally does. What I'm going to get is I'm going to get a little window right in between choose one and save this search as soon as it finishes doing what it's doing. Okay, it's just taking a lot longer than it normally does. Normally this is, this is already done. All right, there we go. Okay, sounds like looks like the uh, the server needs an aspirin or something. Okay, so it just saved, it just memorized everything that I had saved. So now it's got my polygon and downy. It's got upcoming sales again. Don't worry about the dates because the dates get punched in after the fact. And it's got LA County South. And again, important, only have one zone selected. So now this is my Again, Shady Oak, so I'm going to give it a specific name for what I'm looking for. So I've called this my Shady Oak Downy NTS to give it a name because what's the goal of this search? To be notified when that Shady Oak property gets their notice of sale and again I'm confirming in the way that I name it that it's in the city of Downing. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now, once it's saved, it's right to my my searches folder at the bottom. It's always going to be at the bottom. And so there's my Shady Oak Downy NTS. And to show you how well this works, I'm going to go ahead and open up that Fountain Valley polygon again. And see how we've got Fountain Valley and it changed it to NTS for Fountain Valley. Then I'm going to go back to my searches and I'm going to select the Shady Oak one. See how it set it back to LA County South? And if I scroll down, there's that funny little polygon I did for LA County South. So I'm going to show you one more trick. Okay, So I'm going to change one thing. I've got LA County South selected. I've got my polygon. I'm going to switch it to notice as a default, okay, and I'm going to hit save again. Let's see if it moves faster. Okay, there you go. That's how quick it normally works, okay. Now, I'm going to call this my Shady Oak Downy and the NOD because I switched it to NOD. I didn't change anything else, did I? Don't worry about the dates because what we're doing is we're setting up an automatic researcher that when the date comes up with new NODs issued in the specific polygon in the city of Downey, I'm going to get notified every time. 
and it's going to say Shady Oak Downey NOD on the email, so I know the target area, I know it's a notice of default, so when I get that email, I go, aha, this is that area that I was targeting because my client wanted a house on Shady Oak in Downey. Now it saved both of those records, both of those searches for NTSs and NODs, both say Shady Oak and Downey, right? Now notice they're still not highlighted, they still say the option is activate. So now I'm going to select the option to activate. Okay, now what I've just done is I've just, I've just learned how to create a, a search and save it to activate it so the search will now send me leads every day so I don't have to go into the website and do the searches for myself. I've learned how to save properties to my My Properties folder and I've learned how I can follow a notice of default all the way to the notice of sale stage and I can get notified when that, uh, when that property is, uh, is on its way to auction. Now one more thing because I got a little slowed down there is I want to do this search for the polygon, notice I'm going to hit the search polygon option. If I ever get a situation where there's nothing, then I know I either need to expand my polygon or I need to expand my date range for my search. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to push the search out and see if that helps. Okay, so what I just did is I want it to be within that polygon, right? And there's one that's right inside that polygon on Guatemala. Remember, the reason I included Guatemala is I thought there might be some, because there's one more thing I want to show you before we let you go. And that's how to make sure I'm going to get notified of any changes in the status on this upcoming sale. So I've just opened the notice of sale profile. Notice if I scroll down, there's a little more information than that notice of default record that we looked at earlier. And notice that this auction is set up to go on Sycamore Drive in Norwalk on April 27th. They have set an opening bid of 275000 but look at what's different that wasn't on the notice of default. This is the status change update. Remember those emails I showed you in the property profile window? So I'm going to select status change as my update function and I'm going to put my email address okay because what I want to do is I want to be notified if the sale gets canceled or postponed and I want to get an email to my inbox that keeps me up to date because if I'm following this property along I want to know if this sale gets canceled or postponed especially if I'm getting my cashier's checks together because I'm ready to go to the auction and bid so I'm going to go ahead and hit submit and that has been saved to my account under my My Properties folder under the email notifications option and it's going to stay there and continue to update until this property finally goes to auction. This has been Bob with County Records Research. Thank you so much for sticking with us. We went a little bit over today, but we did want to make sure we covered all the bases for you for people that are new to the website and using the different functions. If you didn't uh, come in for the whole presentation, remember you can always go to our YouTube channel and watch previous demonstrations. And uh, if you miss out on our presentation on Friday, remember also we have Friday presentations as well. And the goal of every Friday presentation is to take you to the next step where we research these particular properties, we evaluate the conditions, and then we determine for ourselves the best way that we can get that deal.